Last year I was in Lisbon and what got me totally high on surprise is that drug dealers were everywhere. Big and small streets, squares and parks harassing me to buy some weed or possibly something juicier. Frankly, it was pretty scary, but also quite intriguing. Really makes you think everybody's doing drugs. Actually, when it comes to drugs, Portugal has a singular approach. Their possessing or using drugs doesn't lead you straight to prison or clinic. Instead, it is acceptable by authorities. So how come Portugal is not known as the highest nation in the world? Can decriminalization of drugs be a good thing? Turns out, decriminalizing drugs can have a positive impact. Before the reform, 1% of Portuguese were addicted to heroin. That is one heroin addict in 100 people, and we're not even considering all the people using cocaine and cannabis. In 1974, Portugal's dictatorship fell after the Carnation Revolution. The country went from needing a license for owning a cigarette lighter to open borders. Drugs were a big hit after 40 years of no experimentation. By 1999, people were injecting themselves on the streets and gardens, and the country had the highest rate of drug-related AIDS death in the EU. So Portugal was having a bad trip, and weirdly, in 2001, they decided to decriminalize drugs. Since then, Portugal considers the use of drugs not as a crime, but as a health problem. How does that work? Drug addicts no longer go to prison, but instead have free access to clinic. People can keep 10 days stash on themselves without any consequences other than having a consultation before commission that consists of a social worker, a psychiatrist, and an attorney. There is needle exchange program say no to a used syringe, giving free clean needles. Free of charge and accessible treatment is provided to any drug user who seeks treatment. There is substitution treatment of methadone and buprenorphine, which are available in pharmacies from 2008. And the results of decriminalization are amazing. Portugal has experienced a general drop of 90% in drug-related HIV infections. The numbers dropped from 104.2 new cases per million in 2000 to 4.2 cases per million in 2015. Before 2001, Portugal had the first place in the death rate by HIV in EU. After the decriminalization, they are below EU average. And not just below, five times below. The number of drug-related death has reduced from 131 per million in 2001 to 20 in 2008. And if you want some more numbers, as of 2012, Portugal's drug death toll set at 3 per million in comparison to EU average of 17.3 per million. It is not all only thanks to the law. There was also an enormous cultural shift and the change of the way how the country sees drugs and addiction. The official policy of decriminalization made it far easier for a broad range of services such as health, psychiatry, employment and housing to work together more effectively to serve their communities. The language began to shift as well. People went from being called junkies to people who use drugs or people with addiction disorders, from being called criminals to being called patients. Loss can have a positive impact, and right after Portugal, Iceland is another great example of intelligent dealing with drugs. In the last 20 years, the country added a couple of laws, such as prohibiting alcohol advertisement or not allowing people younger than 20 to buy alcohol. And the results? The percentage of 15 and 16-year-olds who have been drunk in the previous month crashed from 42 to 5. The percentage of teenagers smoking cigarettes every day fell from 23 to just 3. But laws don't work alone. The Icelandic government encourages parents to spend time with their children and to talk to them in order to keep them away from drugs. Every low-income family child in the capital city of Reykjavik receives a scholarship of approximately 450 US dollars per month for recreational activities, such as sports, music, art, dance, 
and other interests. This is a big help when it comes to saying no to drugs. Decriminalization didn't stop the drug abuse in Portugal, but according to European Monitoring Center for Drugs and Drug Addiction, the use of illicit substances among the adults has been on the decline over the past decade. In Iceland, the fair use of law and a total understanding of drug use as a social problem led to the youth quitting drugs. In both cases, the initiative that improved people's lives came from their governments. By choosing to aim for the solution instead of focusing on the problem, both leaders of Portugal and Iceland improved the quality of life of their people. A lesson we can all learn from them. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully we challenged your vision of the world with this video and you had good time with us. If this is so, be sure to subscribe because mammography, friend or foe, is coming up.